Good afternoon. Welcome to Show Studio. Today we're going to be talking about the Spring Summer 2015 Comme des Garçons Homme Plus show. Adam, if you'd like to begin the intros. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Adam Chai Symbol. I work at the website Nowness and also work with uh, designer Ryan Lowe. Hi, I'm Howell Davis, fashion writer and course leader of fashion communication at Central St. Martins. I'm Chris Sutton. I'm a creative director and a fashion designer. <laughs> I'm Dal Children, I'm a fashion writer, and that's Ernie, who's very noisy. <laughs> <laughs> Having his own little panel down there. So, Adam, um, I thought since you have come in in com, uh, we should begin by asking you why you're such a, such a fan. Yeah, I think, well, com is something I, I constantly buy, constantly wear. It's like, if I, you know, struggle with what to wear during the day, Comms always my go-to thing, and then you know it's been it's just loyalty over the years. If I have to name one brand that you know I would go to, you know go to, into my coffin with, that would be Com. <laughs> wow, okay. God! And and I thought it was interesting when we were talking earlier that you two both love Com, but have very different relationships to the pieces you like. So Adam Adam likes some much more colourful kind of more statement pieces, and you like the almost secret undercover fashion com um i just thought that's interesting chat yeah i think you know we were talking a bit about before and maybe our references are slightly different i'm slightly older so the com i sort of grew up when i was a fashion student was much more when it was much more discreet severe much more monochrome you know and it was kind of that was what really informed a lot of my understanding of fashion was looking at com sort of much earlier collections before it was a lot more colorful and extravagant, which I think it is more now, and I think it, now it's a, a lot more playful than it used to be. Mm. Yeah, because I guess if you look back to, like, to all the Peter Lindbergh work with like, Ray back in the 80s, like, looking at that, you would never think she would do a collaboration with Bear Break or like, things like that. So I think there was a kind of maybe like a watershed moment between the two era, and like, before that, it was all this uh, deconstruction, and after that, it would, like, she would start using sequins, colours, and prints a lot more so mm -hmm. i guess maybe like that because uh, the, the, the second half is where what i grew up, grew up with so mm -hmm. i guess you know that influenced me a lot more than you know maybe the, you know the other stuff like because uh, also like susie Menkes, i remember once she said like back in the 80s that all the editors were just dressed in black as like crows there was a flock from one show to another mm -hmm. and that was the time when like yoji and com was so mm -hmm. relevant Mm. But then I guess, you know, I was never exposed to that as, you know, as a first-hand experience, so mm. I guess, maybe that. I don't feel like, um, you know, because for all these panels I sort of do a little history rejig of stuff, and I don't feel like comms ever really lost its relevance, you know, it's not something that's ever faded out or had a dead moment or, I can't really think of another label that's had this long. It seems to be something that has abstract proposals every season. It's not something that's for the consumer or something that you're going to sell as easily. Do you know what I mean? It seems to be the thing that inspires a lot of people. Mm. And that originality, I don't think, I don't think that is very fashion. It's more inspirational, isn't it? But it's, it's interesting that, you know, I, I was reading an interview with Adrian Joff today mm. and he said 97% goes on sale of wow. the catwalk, which mm. I think is, you know, you know, when you think about how extreme some of the looks are, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Mm. I also think, though, it's a brand and a collection that people are kind of afraid to criticise or question. So I think mm. it's one of those brands that people just blanket, go, oh my God, it's, it's kind of amazing. Because there is this, this kind of fetishisation of Japanese fashion and culture. I think people always try and look for something in it mm. that may not be explicit, that may never even be there, but I think people spend a lot more time convincing themselves that there's something here than they do with lots of other, than they don't, that they don't do with lots of other brands. So that's one of the reasons why it's still maintained its relevance, because I think a lot of people are kind of, we just accept, we kind of always wonder that if we don't understand it, I think it's the same with Prada as well, if you, if you look at it and you don't like it, it's not, you always feel like there's something in, wrong with you you always feel like, oh, maybe I just don't understand it, or maybe I just don't get it. And I think Com is one of those labels too, where you kind of are almost, you know, your own insecurities really come into play, where most people kind of go, no, there must be something in this that I like. It's very few people that ever say, Com's awful. Are you accusing it of being Emperor's New Clothes? <laughs> no, but I do think, 
I do think it would largely people just always try and look for something that may not be there. I understand and I love it. I think it's totally relevant. But actually, you know, if you look at it, it's consistent. It's consistently, maybe you could say it's consistently relevant, but it's consistent with its message and with its aesthetic and what it does and what it says. But I don't necessarily feel that any label should just blanket be accepted as fantastic. Mm. Um, and I feel, well, but maybe that's the time that we're living in right now that there are so many because labels Because she, oh. they, she, they actually have a company philosophy and I can't remember the Japanese word, unfortunately. But you know, previously she's described it as strength and currently she's describing it as newness, mm. that they've got to do this. I mean, obviously there's, there's shirt, which mm. is very toned down and there's mm. a play, is it? The, the super cheap yeah. label um, with the little love heart person, mm. you know, which are you know, very normal. But, um, but the main lines are, to, I mean, she does at least, if, because I think the difference with Prada is it still relates to fashion, whereas Con's mm. just often so off the wall that it's, mm. that it is, you know, I, I remember writing an article about it millions of years ago, and I said it was a label I wouldn't, wouldn't have to explain to any of my straight mates, that they just get it. Yeah. Mm. That it's just obvious that it's art or, or that it's creative. Mm. I think it's much more, you, uh, talking about Prada again, you mentioned it being similar to Prada. I think Calm is much more challenging than Prada. Prada is, you know, quite commercial. Mm -hmm. But I also think everyone, you know, talks about Calm being so creative, but it is hugely commercial as well. Like you said, mm. you know, 97% goes into the, on, on sale. But we were talking about it before, you know, the actual selling collection is, you know, hundreds of times bigger than the catwalk collection. So, you know, that's why people like me and people like you can buy into Com in that it is really, really diverse. You know, and when you look at the tailoring, you know, that she does for menswear that's really simple, you know, it's actually really easy to wear. You know, there isn't, you know, we only see the show, which is just, the, you know, the small vision for that season. But yeah, but also going back to like people assuming like uh, Japanese brands would just have more like say what intellect creativity people assume that but look, look if you look at Yoji Isimiyaki you know those are the brands that are hugely creative hugely intellectual but then they they also suffer from like period periods of like irrelevance mm. like mm. you know just in my opinion yeah. mm. so but then with Com I think there is something more mm. the way Ray and Adrian manage the brand yeah that mm. you know in order to you know for it to stay relevant yeah mm. well, I think also Comme des Garçons is more than just the collection we're about to look at all the women's wear collections in it there's like, like 20 or maybe even more yeah. brands underneath that mm. Mm. and it's the shops and it's the curation of you know their Dover Street Market in New York is one of the biggest sort of supporters of young British designers so yeah. you can't yeah of course there's a real power behind them and they actually kind of really are supporting all of these designers that so many other people might say are fantastic but they're actually putting with their money where their mouth is well, i think that's one of the most exciting things about them that's what keeps them relevant mm. well i think the partnership between adrian and yeah. ray and you know because issy um what's his name naoki takizawa i mean he's not anywhere near uh, you know, he came up after Is Issy and he wasn't anywhere near any of the people that, that R Ray and Adrian mm. promoted. I mean, even Adrian, to have this like second head who kind of acts, you know, on his own thing. And then um, also Ronnie Newhouse is quite involved, mm. isn't she, with Com? And, and it's just like an opera, you know, lots of small uh, opera, you know, and that kind of thing of, a, you know, as an academic, it's like that kind of thing almost of her as a leader and a teacher. And, makes you because she is still red whereas Yoji and Issy did, didn't haven't promoted princelings in mm. the same I think essentially like Dal mentioned then you know there are huge retailers you know ultimately the you know the business people that have managed to marry that you know they're creative people pri primarily but you know they've got that huge retail presence and that gives them so much kudos and since they since they've got the Dover Street you know and that sort of empire and that's all built within what we see at the show so I think it's you know it's easy to forget that power of, of being retailers and that connection with customers and that control, you know it's a hugely powerful part of their of their success really. I think I think retail is often like neglected as a mm. as a powerful fashion mm. thing. Um, you know Paul Paul Gorman's book The Look on the power of shops. I mean the Dover Street is such a it's like with show studio it's like one of the blocks of London yeah. it's so important to to London fashion it's one of yeah. these little places that people orbit around yeah. and you 
and you go to things and it plugs you in and whether you just go to the events or whether you're you know Mr Channel 4 TV producer who goes there every week to find out what you should be wearing mm. or you know it's such a clever well a yeah clever it's pioneering idea. it was pioneering when it opened you know it really changed about changed the landscape of retail about how people shopped and how shops looked you know if you forget before it opened places were very dull compared mm. to how Dover Street looked, it was really different. I think one of the sad things for me is when Dover Street actually put their name on the window, because I think for a long time it was open and there was no branding on the outside, so you just saw these army of people that were quite clearly looking for it, kind of walking up and down the street going, where is it, it's in the sold office block. But then as soon as they put that thing on there, and that's probably why they're such good business people, is that obviously that kind of changed the whole thing, but it became something that wasn't a secret. Mm. And it was it was something that everyone was allowed to get into and buy into, and you just have to look at the regeneration of Dover Street itself. Mm. That's all thanks to that store. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Well, also maybe um, didn't didn't Tom Ford build his HQ there as well back in the day? Mm. So Did Gucci, he? Gucci, I think was at, at the Gucci office. I remember a very long time ago to going to some sort of brown carpeted mega lift. <laughs> mm. Yeah, um, but. Um, so, Adam... <laughs> Is he too noisy? I don't think so, he's just settling. I think he's got a scratch. Um, do you, with, with Com, what kind of pieces do you go for? I think, that's, I th I think it's really interesting. Yeah, the things, if, yeah, if I'm honest, like, I do actually buy more wooden swear than men's wear for Com. Because I do think, for me, men's wear, like on blue, came as kind of more like a subsidiary of the woman's collection because you that well that's for me because basically like the, the men's line started after the mm. women's line and it always you know shows a pan of like motif following the women's line yeah so and then i can wear women's wear mm. right for whatever reason but then so yeah i guess but that that so women's wear will always be the first thing i go to but always uh, but like more like recently i'm probably just buying more and more men's wear because i now hold you know a nine to five job so I probably need more work clothes. That's why, but then, yeah, but I would say I buy more women's wear. Than, oh, well, it, the things I always buy the show ending look. I always try to do that. Yeah. But then, yeah, uh, uh, lucky that we have Dover Street in London. So they always, because they always just, you know, they're, they're very, you know, just they always just put out the biggest piece in the store. And then, uh, you know, if I can afford it, I just buy it, so. What's your most kind of cherished possession from Com? Um, I would say uh, probably something like from Broken Bride, that collection, because that was like when I first started buying my own clothes. I think that was back in 2006. Mm. So yeah, it probably is a dress uh, from that collection, but which I, I've never worn. But then, yeah, with a lot of comms I, that I buy, I don't actually wear them. And I go to like Dovershire Market Market, which is the warehouse sale, mm -hmm. where you can just go in and buy everything like 70% off. And that's the time where I just go buy the craziest stuff. And then I just, you know, I was, well, some people say it's like collecting, you know, mm. those pieces. But it is one of those labels that you, I would imagine, you just, you don't get rid of. You know, even if you're yeah. quite sort of, you know, regimented about your own wardrobe, which I am as well. You know, every time I buy something, I try and get rid of something. So there's always the same amount of clothes. But Con would be the one that you kind of always keep, I guess. Mm. And there are so many other designers, or well, I should say there are so few designers that you actually do that with that you would actually kind of mm. go, oh no, maybe I just kind of will keep this somewhere in a box. The something. craziest thing I've bought probably, is a, it's not com, but it's a towel dress. It's the mm. paper dress when she did all the paper, like that paper collection. Mm. So there was like maybe four or five of those dresses made and Terence Co. wore one of them into the sea for ID editorial. Mm. But so yeah, that's that, well, that, those dresses, I bought them at the, from Dover Street and that's the, probably the, the thing I cherish the most. Nice. And do you collect them, you know, do you have an aim with what you will do with them? Is it like, do you collect them to view them or to show people? Well, I, I guess, well, in the big, well, um, I think, I think it, it kind of has changed over time. Because obviously when I s first started wearing like crazy show pieces com, it's, it has that show off element in it. Mm. So because when, when I used to go to boombox and like, things like that, I was just always dressed up to the max. So like com would be a very good way to dress up but people still appreciate it. Mm. They wouldn't say, you know, you're a peacock, so you know, you're wearing something that's assume, like, you know, assumingly in intellectual, you know, whatever. But then, so yeah, that, that was like the safe brand for me to go to to dress up as well. 
but then over time I guess you know I have more more of an understanding of the brand of you know Ray Carl Kubo as a designer mm -hmm. so it ha that has changed that's become something I truly believe in and then and then it's a habit if so if I don't buy something from one collection if I skip a collection I just feel very bad about it I guess wow are there any other labels that you do that with are you just a shopaholic junior maybe this yeah so it's all her like her prints links all her okay yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Do any of you do that with anything? No. No. You, no. No. No, I don't either. I sort of, I, if I was going to do it with anybody, it would be Gosha, who is a sort of semi princeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, they're producing uh, all the clothes yeah. now. So. But I don't. No. Um. So, should we look at the clothes? Yeah. Check it out. What did, uh, what, did, what did the panel think of the last couple of shows? So the last season, the whole... Yeah, pretty season. bold, pretty fearless. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, definitely committed to it and did something strong and stuck with it. Just mm. doesn't back down, just not doing subtle very well. Mm. I like the layered one the season before, they're like mega layers. Yeah. I and I also think, that, like, I think the things I like the most from the last couple of shows is always the hair. I mm. always love Julian D's, but it's yeah. hard to replicate. Yeah. 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 Or big yeah. oily. Or these, yeah. Oil slick. No, I really liked the tailoring last time with the, with the frilly shirts that were sort of poking through the holes on the mm. blazers and things mm. like that. It was really beautiful. Mm. It was actually quite a beautiful collection last season, I thought. So I don't know how... And that's not necessarily a word that you, I think you'd always use to describe calm. Yeah. And then I think last collection did show that the tailoring mm. within of the pattern cutting uh, is just supreme. Mm. Yes. Like, because mm. people don't necessarily think that, like th that's not the first thing they think about when they think about com. But then I think like tailoring, the Japanese way of tailoring mm. is just so like superior. Yeah. Well, then, uh, Charlie Porter was blogging the, the online jackets with all the structure mm. left revealed and mm. it looked, it didn't look a mess. It looked really pretty. Yeah. Mm. What did you think? <laughs> woof, woof, woof. So what are those pointy shoes? <coughs> wow, sir. Those are the giant elephants. I remember going to a show which I think might have been in the same show space mm. with uh, lots of friends modelling and uh, it was a very dear fashion memory because we couldn't find anywhere to sleep that night so me and six of the boys ended up in this Japanese girl's bed. And that's, that's where we slept that night. <laughs> Not quite sure the relevance of that, but that's what I always think about when I think of con menswear. <laughs> oh wow, that angle's good, check it out. It's extreme again. Yeah, it's interesting that that picture's there, because normally that's kind of, it would be a more clean shot, so there must be, must have been something with them walking very close together or... Mm. Well, there must the be something going on with claustrophobia, right? Because the ceiling looks incredibly close. Mm. The, the, the models are incredibly close together. It looks like the photographers are almost on the mm. yeah, yeah. runway. It seems to be she kind of pushes that feeling first sometimes. Like the last season was that kind of, I mean, the holes were where pockets would be and she kind yeah. of nullified the, the use of it. Yeah. She kind of controls and takes that theme and makes it kind of a, I don't know, maybe an can I say it, like kind of an art form? She makes yeah. that art interpretation of it, which I guess is quite intellectual. Mm. She affects people. Yeah. yeah, I think the shows are always yeah. really kind of a emotional, intense sort of yeah. happenings in a way. You know, the ones I've been to in Paris, they're, they're either really beautiful and quiet yeah. and serene and there's classical music, or sometimes they're really kind of tense and aggressive. I, I, th I, I was looking earlier at a lot of things and it seemed to me almost like her collections are almost a frenetic reaction to something. Mm. Like she reacted, like the last season with the, the burst open, you know, seams and you could see something else and like that rebirth thing. It was almost like her ideas were trying to come out. And that's how she shows it. Sorry. It's cute. There's also obviously a military influence here with the buttons and the sort of shapes on those jackets. Well, the, the, the tailoring and that kind of, author what a sort of authority and that kind of construction, maybe that's mm -hmm. part of the, the set, right? Adam, what, what's your uh, what's your credit card twitching at? <laughs> <laughs> the final. I guess there's giant elephants. There's shoes. The shoes. Wow. 
What's that pattern? Is it like ink blot or is it insects or something? What is it? I can't see. Maybe I can't maybe see we'll that. go to details. Uh, the the photography is quite bleached out, isn't mm. it? And I think you know what's always really interesting is the choice choice of models. There's always you know definitely the com, and it is boy like I guess yeah. the last few years there's always been which has kind of made me harder to digest it because you know the way the models are presented they're really young boys and, and it's very kind of um, juvenile a w approach really in, in the styling and they, they look like the same sort of guys again. It is always quite aggressive as well I think one of you used that word. I think it's aggressive. I made that up. Yeah there's something always quite punkish in its attitude. In a bit isn't and it? it? And quite kind of yeah, I mean aggressive. That's is interesting. A word that I'd use that I see. I don't see it as. It's not incredibly. It's not romantic. It's not soft. But it's got this kind of. Well, I guess it's that kind of fire, that reaction that you were talking about. Mm. It's obviously there's something. There's tension there all the time. Friction. But then I see that also in McQueen collections. You know, it's never going to be this light sort of. I like that though. Know. Like a hard edge. It's more interesting. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, yeah it's always hard. But also, wow. I think it's always incredibly, you know, Ray is or was particularly really influenced by British culture. You know, mm. in um, Nicholas Coleridge's amazing book, published in 88, he talks about, thank you, there's a quote from Catherine Hamlet who talks about, you know, designers being inspired by Hyper Hyper. Mm. And Ray was one of the major kind of people back then that was really influenced by by like London, by yeah. club culture that was... That, that was her, one of her justifications for Dover Street, wasn't it? She felt London was missing Kensington Market. And mm, yeah, and so there, there's always, you know, you always kind of see or recognise some of that there. You know, with this kind of holy Because yeah. with, with, with this, it's almost like a punkish take on yeah. a teddy boy. Yeah. yeah, it is actually. The hair as well, even that kind of... Thanks. Looks like a little gang of kids. And she just have this fascination about like British culture. But, like that, that there was a, one collection where she all those British flag. That's a yeah. Ruby wear collection. But she just kind of like twisted them, bind, like you know, bind them around your body. Mm. But then that that's I think it's a very punk way to you know. Mm. But I think you know you mentioned Yoji and Issy maybe being kind of falling in and out of fashion. I think that's probably why it's because they don't have that. They just don't. You know, it's inherently kind of it, they just stick to kind of what they're what they're about, and it's, that makes it very difficult for. I guess everyone to buy into all the time, mm. whereas because this is so grounded in Western influences or influences kind of that we may recognise anyway, maybe that's what makes it kind of relevant all the time. There are so many obvious parallels between mm. British and Japanese culture. Mm. I mean, yeah. we for a start we wear school uniforms, so it's like you know anybody who's worn a school uniform knows how to subvert mm. very strict clothes. You know, there's a the sort of repression. There's the island culture looking at, you know, lots of fashion people in Japan have talked about how as an island culture you get everything, but you don't get it in the same way, so you see it in a book or you see it on the screen. True. Sorry. And uh, also there's a very strong... Uh, good. We should really yeah. talk about it. Yeah. There's a new, new line uh, called uh, Com Noir, which is designed by Kay, I forgot his last surname. but it's like the, Yeah, the, the, the latest Princeling. So mm. he's like the after tower, after junior. So, but his designs basically like just very, very punk, like traditional mm. kind of punk mm. with studs, with a lot of cut out. So I guess, you know, that just shows. And then she champions like people like uh, Jun Takahashi mm. a yeah. lot. Mm. And then that, like he's one of the punkest people like I've ever met, so. That side scene with a, I don't know if it's a, like that kind of red leopard print. I don't even think that's what it is, but it the pocket seems to be messed up and not aligned properly. Yeah, they almost so like two different patterns that yeah, have been this cut kind of together. Structure is being messed with. What do you think to this double button? I think that might have That there is a problem with a lot of com pockets. They're not pockets. Yeah. They just look like pockets. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't like a lot of com design you don't actually have any pockets to put anything in. That's it. Yeah, for me, that's always a problem. Would you say that they're not that functional as clothing? Yeah, I, I, well, I guess. They're more the, about, that makes I you, guess, an you know, aesthetic that, or a look. That probably require you to, you know, to buy a com, like, wallet or whatever to, to, you know, <laughs> yes. to carry with. <laughs> but everyone has. The com wallet changed wallets. Yeah, massively. Yeah, it really has. I almost enjoy these close-ups more than actually seeing the full looks. I think you get to see a lot more of, 
you know, the placement of the prints and the holes in this case? Well, I think it's very interesting. You know, if you read a Tim Blank's review, it's all about the feeling. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, so many of the, f of the fashion writers now have, it's like a sort of arms race. So like, if you're a fashion writer, you only respected now if you've gone backstage and looked through all the clothes. And 10, 15 years ago, people didn't do that. You went backstage to shake the designer's hand and tell them it was a wonderful mm. show and they pretended to care. And, um, and now like every fashion report has like full detail on, on the, you know, the 10 minutes you've spent looking at the clothes, which I think is interesting. The shoes are incredible. Mm. I do think the show somehow looks to be quite disjointed. It's like two part, but then like the two part do not nece necessarily c somehow connect. Mm. But maybe there's a, there's a thing we need to look deeper yeah. to find. But I guess for now, just looking at this, it just looks like there's two part. Yeah, what does it say on that t-shirt? Something over, strong over? I don't know, but I love this strong kind of something. net top. Uh, over. So one of the collections was talking about how they, um, she was reacting to the fashion world that she was in, like that against the, the consumerism of it. It almost seems like she's taking the piss out of the Saint Laurent kind of a, uh, grunge thing, isn't it? It's a little bit pushing it very far. Like you've got the winkle pickers, but they're mm. absurd. Mm. It's like an absurdist abstract version of that. Interesting. A little bit, isn't it? A little bit taking no, the piss. That's really interesting. Maybe. But the shoes also just look great. Well, I mean, I don't know if I'd be wearing the... I mean, I don't <laughs> wear shoes, but you know, or own any, but... Um, they look great to me. And I guess quite a lot of this actually goes on sale, is that it, as in into the store? Yeah. Am I right in thinking yeah. that? Are you yeah. know yeah. me? But actually, you know, it's not like watching a catwalk collection and you know only like half of it's actually going to be available to buy. But I think, you know, when you go into Dozy, there's some mad, like really extreme pieces mm. on hangers. Because I just think it's so great I guess that that's at least available. At Dover Street, it's because it's their own store. They have, yeah. to, I guess they have obligations somehow to put out, you know, the majority of that collections. But I, I'm not sure about other retailers, like, you know, say department stores. Mm, like, yeah. I think well, they, they buy it on blue, but then I think they, they tend to buy more like shirt, yeah. com shirts, mm. and like com com, that kind of collection. But, but I think that's, ama that's amazing that those things are actually available to buy. I yeah. think there was kind of, because it's all like, if you really wanted to buy something that was avant garde or kind of quite extreme, that wasn't made by maybe some a graduate or some, a very, very young brand. I don't think you really have that many options of where to go, but it seems like, you know, if you wanted something that was really beautifully constructed mm. and made, and it happens to be really extreme, mm. you could but go to Dover Street and get it. The men's work's funny because it's, it's extreme on one level, but it's essentially often a blazer, a yeah. shirt, mm. a formal yeah. shoe. It's very easy for you. Yeah. It's not like you're wearing a space suit, you're yeah. turning, you know, Mr. This is why Mr. Advertising Agency wears this, yeah. you know, but it's a shame sometimes because, I mean, Nicola's first collection from Moogler is a really good example for that. I mean, the, my favourite pieces from that collection, mm. they never got made. Like those, um, you know, the leather and latex patched jeans even, like two pairs got made. The most interesting part of that show mm. never materialised. Mm. And then I don't think it did very well in the end because of it. So, I mean, right. I mean it's a testament to them selling these key pieces. Yeah. Mm. Because I would have loved to have seen, when I was in Tokyo and I walked in and found a big display from Moogler, I went straight for it thinking I was going to get a, find a latex coat. Right. And I just find these really beautifully tailored jackets and shirts, which is a different thing. But it comes most extreme pieces, that's what I'm mm. saying. <coughs> in menswear, the most extreme pieces often are building blocks of quite yeah. conservative wardrobe, which is quite clever really. You mm. know, it's not that hard for a person to wear. Mm. I'm not saying these collections I save, but then it, it's not like all these pieces. If you take them apart, mm. they are actually not that you know unwearable mm. or like in, in yeah. any sense. Mm. But then, like if you look back like, a couple of seasons ago, when they ha she had all those floral printed big dresses yeah. made out of paper, that's unsellable. That's mm. unwearable. Yeah. But then with this collection, there's none of like if you take them apart, you know, you can just wear them like any. Like most people can wear them yeah, if yeah. you're into fashion. Yeah. Also, I think people that wear com though have to be able to almost justify why they're wearing it. Do you know what I mean? Do you it's think quite so? nice. Yeah, I think yeah. it's quite. Well, it depends what version of com. Yeah, even yeah. if you're wearing the minimalist or the yeah. kind of quieter version, it's a real mark of uh, of some. I don't know what to say, but of something. You know, when someone wears it, you you kind of have to back it up. 
Is it you subversive? You can't go hang out in a boombox cool. and those crazy pieces and not have anything to yeah. say about them. Mm. You know, there's quite, it's quite nice that they, that you have to have a real, they have to have a real person inside them. You know, they don't just have to have a, it's not just about dressing this vessel. You know, it's not, they're not just decoration, <coughs> yeah. actually, you know, calm clothes. They are mm. kind of about dressing a, a personality, which is one of those things that Ray wanted to do with her women's wear. You know, it was all about removing the, the sexuality from the body and kind of mm. going, you know, women have brains. And it's a similar thing with this, you know, it's kind of, these aren't necessarily... But it never goes so far as to be costume. You ne you ne you're never a clown. I don't know, now. sometimes the men's wear is a bit There's costumey, I think, yeah. yeah. Like when, when he did, you know, she was doing lots of men in skirts for a long time and, yeah, that was quite full on. And yeah, it was quite costumey. I guess I, I tend to agree with Darius here. It's not like, it's, it's like, it's borderline costume, but there's a fine line. It's like, it hasn't crossed it. That's why I always felt safe wearing calm to like boombox. Because like a lot of people would be wearing costumey yeah. stuff. Yeah. But if you wore calm, if people knew that was calm, mm. it's okay. But I think the fine line between costume, sorry, is mm. personality. You, know, you can wear anything, and but if you can can wear it, and you can kind of almost, oh, it sounds so cheesy, but own it. Therefore, it doesn't <coughs> become costume wear because the clothes aren't wearing you. But this is but a little the, bit. The, the, that's a very intrusive in the um, in the real world, which is what part of common success. Because if you, you know, if you walk into a business situation, which most of the people who are buying this have to do every day. You can't walk in in a, a personality big enough for a costume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can maybe have a, a funky shoe or a, like a really nice blazer. Is it, this is, I don't mean this in a negative way really, but the, is it, because <laughs> maybe you don't have that personality, when people go to the club and they wear the most extreme costume, it, it, what's that feeling really? It's is it, mask, is yeah. it a need for, it, uh, not just attention, I don't really, play into that attention-seeking thing, because I don't really mean that, but I mean, what is it? Do you know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. what, what is the thing you're trying to say and provoke? Is it just, look, I'm wearing something that's by calm? I don't mean that in a negative, yeah, really no, shitty I think, way, but. I think it's true, and you know, it's kind of, what you sort of said in a way, you know, calm has such credibility, mm. you know, within, within the fashion industry that I think, you know, it's almost what you said before as well, that Ray can get away with stuff before, because mm. there is so much good will and people respect what she does so much. You know, even if you don't like Com, I think it's very difficult not to respect her as a designer. Yes. But I think so. also like people who I see as the biggest like Com wearer, the most like publicly iconic people, someone like Carleen Surf, the fashion director at Lucky, like she has the biggest personality ever in the universe in the fashion mm. industry. But she wears Com a lot. Like she's the spokesperson for me. That kind of colourful look, those paper, you know, those mm. paper mm -hmm. dresses. Mm -hmm. She wore them to every fashion show. And then like for me, for me, like even without wearing any like, you know, costume, like big show pieces, mm. she still had the biggest personality. Yeah. And then that, but the clothes doesn't, you know, there's no it, the contradiction, you know. I think this collection's, uh, you know, uh, a lot more masculine than... It's, it's, it's the shoe. <laughs> Sorry, I was... <laughs> the I yellow thing. What's happening with the shoe? I think it's half. It's at the beginning and at the end of the show. It's not in the middle. But it's just bizarre because it, it's very much that, um, you know, because that's one of the first things you ever learn about fashion, isn't it? About the, the medieval shoe and how you had to be above a certain social class to have a certain amount of length in your shoe. Mm. I didn't learn that. Yeah. Neither did I. But it was in the Ladybird book when I was like seven. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Wow. And you Maybe to Ray's got it too in the studio. Yeah. It's good luck though. I mean, well, it's a, uh, they were doing it in Mexico, weren't they? Mm -hmm. There was like these uh, laser cowboys in Mexico that were doing these big long shoes a few years ago. They are pretty menacing shoes though, aren't they? It is a little bit sinister. Yeah. It means if you're, if you're wearing them to go to a show, you have to sit fun roll. <laughs> and yeah. then the photographers yes. would shout at you for 20 minutes because yeah. your toe's in the way. Well, also it also means people can't get close to you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously these are, I guess these aren't going to be produced and people aren't going to be wearing them on the Piketty line, but, you know, there is a certain, yeah, they aren't very menacing. Well, they're, they're weapons. Sort of mm. Are they really? Or the truth is, if someone walked down the street, like a badass at three in the morning wearing those, are you going to panic? Or are you going to think, it's fine? It's calm. <laughs> yeah, okay, calm girl. It, it's, it, I wouldn't, I think it's sinister in the sense that these guys are wearing military and they all look a little bit serious. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, no. No, but the hell's right. I mean, if these are just these are these are just really 
great jackets and trousers and things and they can yeah. be blown apart mm. into a really kind of quite nice collection mm. um, and also you were saying about the people going into their offices and mm. they might have this sort of job but I don't I mean I don't think anyone anyone that's I don't know how many people that work in really conservative environments are buying calm anyway well I'm not talking about conservative but I'm talking about any business environment you have to you can't you know you can't bowl in there in a sort of a leotard or something. You have to... You could, but maybe just once. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe just once. It's your last day. I mean, I don't know. When I think of comedy, I just, I always think of sort of financially successful... <coughs> I tend to think of it as a line that it's a slightly older man... Yeah, I was going to say. ...who's made his own money or yeah. been successful rather than a kid. I think that that's quite interesting about com as well, is the, is the age... You know the age bracket that it does appeal to. It's like people, young people like you, but also there's a lot of people, women of a certain ge ge generation that are obsessed by com. You know, and that is their uniform. And I think that's quite unusual actually that a brand does have such a wide scope of appeal in terms of age groups. So, so is that what it's saying? Maybe that I don't have to go to an office and I've got enough money to pay for this. <laughs> yeah, is I'm, that the statement? I'm trying to think who else. Uh, like John Waters, probably like the biggest um, John Waters wearer. Yeah. He could wear those shoes. Yeah. Nathan, uh, Nathan Gregory Wilkins, the DJ, he's a massive com fan. Um, but if you look at the com rail in Liberty, you know, it's very kind of nice, approachable yeah, stuff. Yeah, commercial, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but I think that's yeah. the, the shirt line, I guess. It's kind of got to that uh, stage that it's almost like, you know, the Westwood shirt. It's a little <laughs> tight, little, little yeah. logo, and then yeah. like everybody, like, you know, football pundits wear them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it has, you know, with shirt, with comm shirt, the line, it has got to that commercial level mm. where everyone, a banker could wear it, everyone can wear it. So I guess those are pieces that sell the most, I guess. And also they've managed to have a fragrance line, and it's quite funny on these panels, normally people kind of go, oh, it's the perfumes that are selling these clothes. And actually with comm, that's never an argument that's ever kind of brought up because the perfumes are also conceptually really interesting and, and warrant kind of conversation. Yeah. Although they have thought. two levels. Mm. They have perf perfume and perfume perfume. Okay. <laughs> and the perfume perfume is made by Com, and the perfume is, is the licensee. Oh, that's yeah. slightly less challenging. Which ones? I okay. can't remember, but if you look on the box. Mm. <laughs> to read the box, that's good. Yeah. So there's the difficult ones are made by them. Yeah. And then the oh right, yeah, I know you mean the number two and the Cause, yeah, because also I do remember that um, when Daphne Guinness did her perfume, her yeah. rose perfume with it, I was told, I don't know how truthful that was, but like the cost for that was about 80% of the retail price. So there's no markup on top of that. Mm. So it was like not making money, mm. but it was more for like a project because, you know, they get on and then they really believed in her. So they, they put out perfume for her. So I guess, you know, that there are risks, maybe like different levels, even with perfume. Mm. Mm. But also, you know, they do, I mean, they're very, they are very good at Coat Lab. I mean, you know, they had Speedo, Vans, yeah. Supreme, uh, didn't Shirt do a collab with Fred Perry? Was it Fred yeah. Perry they did a collab with? Yeah. They did you know, the H&M one as well. H&M, you know, and that perfume does sell. Yeah. So it's like, I think in Leeds, you know, they're not. The wallet. The wallet, <laughs> the wallet obliteration of like the, 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 Earth changed on its axis. Yeah, I, I just I can't even imagine how many like play T-shirt they sell every day mm -hmm. around the world. Like, yeah, because like I mean, I did see in um, what's that horrendous store in? Uh, uh, it's not horrendous. Just the food's not very nice. The store's actually amazing. Um, uh, Cesani's sister. Uh, Corsa 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 Corsa. So that store, which is actually great, I just didn't like the tofu. Um, was uh, they were selling play, but it was really funny because they'd left the yen price on, mm -hmm. and their markup was insane compared to the yen price, which was quite funny. It was quite like it was quite low. But it is a really com I mean, it is a commercial brand. This section of it isn't at all. But I guess because it has so many lines, mm. therefore you know, mm. it kind of ticks. It ticks hundreds and hundreds of boxes, which is is why it, it, still, it still has that influence and it is so successful because at retail level, into fragrances, into accessories, into it, cut, it, it ticks all of those boxes that actually lots of brands also do, but Com never ever kind of has to, uh, you know, is never kind of criticized for it because they do it in a really 
well, we interesting were, way and in, in a way that really seems quite kind of crucial to what they're about. When we were talking about sty uh, diffusion lines before mm. with Calvin, you know, this is the difference that you believe that everything they do, Ray and Adrian mm. have thought about and have real belief in. And, and, and you know, they, I don't feel like they do anything just for the cash ever, which is mass, you know, you yeah. really, and I think when you were talking about, um, when you were talking about, uh, when you were talking about, um, oh, I've forgotten my point. <laughs> anyway, when you were saying that no matter what, even if you hated them, yeah. uh, hated her, you'd still yeah. respect her. Yeah, well, I think she's got that, that longevity of, you know, because there's that huge respect that she's been doing something so brilliantly for a long time. So we have Mr. Nazir Mazar's um, celebrity question. <laughs> um, so, he says this is a more general question for us. Do you think this current trend in casual sportswear uh, collections will fade out or become the new way men dress? It's obviously a very pertinent question yeah. for <laughs> Mr. Mazar. Oh, no. Well, so he's wanting, he's wanting a high-end consultation here. I think it's um, just a trend. It, it's a moment and yeah. it's passing. It's past nearly. And I do think it's kind of like exploding everywhere. I think there is, like for me, there is a slight sense of resentment to that because it's just so everywhere in your face. So when I saw, like I, I saw Katie Erie's collection actually, because she was known for doing sportswear, mm. but then uh, like, but now she put out a collection which is based on Dallas uh, Book Buyers Club. Yeah, yeah. And it's so different and it's so refreshing to see something like that. So I th for me, that was a standout collection in London. When you look at everyone else, like Astrid, you know, Sean Sampson, they're still doing, you know, the kind of same kind of styles. Yeah. And I just felt like, you know, maybe it's a bit, you know, well, over Well, Shannon, I think he's, you know, I spoke to him and he was kind of very much like, well, this is what everyone's kind of doing. So mm. you've got to kind of move it on. Mm. You can't keep doing it. I mean, I don't know. I guess it just depends. It actually depends on what, what people are being uh, almost allowed to do at college. You know, if, if tutors around the, around the country or the world are kind of allowing menswear students to just cut jersey sweatshirts and put their names on them, then I'd be really worried about the state of kind of fashion education. So it kind, sure. of, it kind of depends what, you know, what, what the future generations are actually being encouraged to make themselves and actually kind of forge an opinion, which is very difficult in the time that you just said that it's full of this, mm. full of people wearing those shapes. I mean, I have real... I have real beef with this idea because obviously, obviously there's a moment, there's a tracksuit mm. moment and right now we're seeing every big designer in Paris and Milan do, you know, a track <coughs> pan or, a, you oh, know, man. do that kind of thing. But also it's like the history of fashion for the last 120 years has been about sport adopting sportswear. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, a sports coat, Google a sports coat. It's not a big umbro thing that the manager of England wears. It's a, it's a type of blazer, you know. So this idea that, that sport, is some, sport is some sort of rupture with, with like what has gone before is, is, is complete fallacy. It's like sport, has every, you know, hunting has been a massive, yeah. uh, tennis, it's like fashion comes from sport. It's true, but there's, a, there's something different though. It's like at the moment, the sport aspect, as in the, the visual clue to that, is what's at the, the forefront. Mania. Yeah, and it, that's a different thing. Because for me, the, that's the shape, the sport shape, which is very straight and it's very mm. cool, and I actually would wear it. Yeah. But if you call it sport, I wouldn't. It's that sport pushing that forward, that kind of like the, literally that uniform of it. Yeah. And that sort of theme that is, I just think doesn't have the same weight that the shape does that you're yeah. talking about. Because the cut and the theme is one thing. You know what I mean? Because even that logo thing, I mean, Astrid and Azir do it very well. But I feel like it's so popular for that mm. one moment. Yeah. Are they going to wear it for another yeah, two yeah. seasons? So, but like, but say, because I do think it's, uh, it, uh, for the question, whether it's like a, a passing f like fashion or trend, but I think there's such a huge support network around it mm. with all this new media, like, you know, things like V-Files, you know, uh, this, all those things around it. I think those people, they, wouldn't, they won't let it go that easily. Because before, maybe say like, you know, when Raph Simmons doing, you know, sportswear, kind of like adopting sportswear, mm. there was never a sport network like that. So like say, you know, like who buy air, all their friends are very powerful people in yeah. the industry. Mm. Mm. So like, well, I, I don't guess think fashion, fashion people, the industry necessarily makes trends 
stay around any longer. You know, it used mm. to have the power of kind of making something sell or making something into a trend. But now, as you're right, you know, with the new media, it's kind of, it's people want to wear it, people are buying it. Though That's almost mm. a much more powerful message and the support yeah. for a particular look than anything that any magazine or newspaper could talk about. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, it is just, you know, fashion's based to a certain extent on shifts in sociology and, mm. and, and people have shifted. And also, you know, we all grew up liking sportswear. Mm. And I think it's difficult to sort of just give up that you grew up liking that. And, and if you grew up liking Nike and Adidas, then surely it's normal for you to imagine, well, what would Nike and Adidas be like if it was a, a, a grind disco with a stripper hovering above a rapper? And then you get yeah, but those gold things, jeans. I remember at school, and it was the Calvin Klein logo and the Armani jeans. This is my school in Belfast. This is not that cool. And there was such a statement, and there was such a symbol, and that's a whole different conversation. But because it was such a symbol, I would avoid it because I didn't want to get into that conversation. I didn't want to be. Avoid it now, would well, you I say, still so. do. Like I'm wearing. I mean, I'm, I'm a designer, and I'm creative, and I literally wear the most simple things because I just. It's enough. Mm -hmm. It's you know. There's a statement that you want to make, and then sometimes taking yourself out of the equation, being part of the conversation, but not putting yourself in it and being judged by it. Mm. I don't want to wear something that says when I was a kid especially, Calvin Klein or Armani, so people can go, oh, you can afford that, or you can't. Like, I feel like it's such a definitive moment that There's I just... so much fashion. Is it's about not, that. Yeah, but so much of fashion is just... I mean, <coughs> Givenchy was successful because its prints were just so bloody obvious Clean. that you saw but it coming so forgettable. At, Sorry, Ricardo. But, but you saw it coming at 4,000 paces. I mean, that was a low... <laughs> might as well have been a logo. Yeah, but isn't it boring already? Yeah. I also think what's quite interesting, we talk about sportswear, and, you know traditional menswear as if as if they can only exist as separate things but I think what's really happening and what is the long sort of thing that's changing is is about things merging together so you don't have to just be sportswear or or, or formal menswear mm. you know it, it's really about the you know about the combination of both I think that's what really Even contemporary fashion is about now yeah. but, but for me the new crop of like streetwear designer less influence designer like Nazir but f for me like even Raph Simmons and these people they're different because like, with Raph Simmons so technical mm. with like you know Italian tailors Italian mm. factories mm. Mm. but with someone in Asia it's totally just you know it's just street, it's yeah. street. Mm. so for me there's still a differentiation between the two I mean you started to do more sort of tailored pieces mm. and denim pieces and you know and also he comes from being extremely skilled because of the hats yeah. so you know it's not like he I think he's beyond just plastering a but, logo. I think, I think but then even with hats, I wouldn't say he's like, I don't know, he, he wouldn't, he's not like Philip Tracy skilled. Mm. But like, because I've seen, you know, real samples in real life. So I would say, you know, he's like maybe, with just mm. my personal opinion, no. I mm. think like, I wouldn't go, if I wanted to go for something like for pan cutting, I would, would probably just wouldn't go for that. But he had worked before he kind of changed, just, I mean, I just to fend him a bit. But before he changed to sort of this, this thing that he's doing, you know, he was making hats for Mugler, Bernard Wilhelm, Louise Gray, Medem Kirchhoff, mm. uh, Victor and Rolf. You know, it's not like, I think some people are, and it'll, yeah, I think some people are just massively dismissive. I'm not saying you are or anybody here, but I think, you know, he's an obviously talented person who's chosen to make this vision. And the, I guess, you know, what you were saying about the perfume, at the end of the day, you know, we can get class and commerce very easily mixed up, you know, and the big money in fashion is in perfume and cosmetics and, and bags. Mm. And Nazir makes a much better perfume to me than, <coughs> than a lot of the designers. Yeah, I mean, for sure, people, you know, improve progress. Like, say, Gosha, when he first started, the quality of clothes was appalling. Like, they were just so poorly made. But now with like someone like Coleman Board helping mm. with his production, mm. obviously it just jumped. Like it's the epiphany in mm. like in the level of production. So I guess you know with Nazir, obviously now he's getting more and more support. He's getting bigger and bigger. I'm sure that you know. It's, but then still for me that the the core question is whether is he a, as good a tailor as Ralph Simmons, mm. or you know. A, no, for me well, that's, that's another thing that new media has given us is that you do compare people that normally wouldn't have been on that same platform, it's a little leveller. So mm. you're comparing someone who's been making ready to wear for how many years, seasons? Like, 15, new, 15, compared to someone who's yeah. doing it for like 15, 20 years, which is 
partly fair and partly unfair, but yeah. I guess in the current kind of way that we live, you're looking at it on a, basically on a screen, and you're looking at it on a trend page, two of them together, mm. and you're kind of discounting their history. So although they're, they can be talented in, in whatever craft that they've kind of come from, that really gets wiped out, which is, is sad, but it is kind of one of those things that you can only, it as a designer, be judged by your last yeah. collection. That's kind that, of that's life. Do. It's that ruthless. Like yeah. you know, mm. when you're out there, you are compared to the you know the biggest houses. Yeah, yeah. Mm. They, it, you know, no one should ever patronise anybody, mm. saying, "Oh, you're starting out, so we expect less from you." Mm. I, cause that's not, not not the way yeah. it is. Well, it's not what you do when you walk into a shop, is it? Mm. No. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't pay. Yeah, obviously, you know, I would just want to pay my money for the best I can get. I mean, I think there is a, oh, there's obviously a risk of, of you know, without being, out, without being able to get bigger and bigger, there's a risk of people getting bored. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the, and, and the problem that's happening, that people are seeing the logo and not seeing anything else, yeah. which is really annoying, because if you touch the clothes, wear them, mm -hmm. look at the metallic denim that he's made things out of, then you're like, this is really interesting and, and good. But how does this relate back to com? I think it's about thinking about how Com is, is a, you know, is it a brand that, you know, we're talking about Nisea, which is such a distinct aesthetic that changes gradually. But, you know, Com literally shifts every season. It's something completely different, isn't it? And always, always maintains even that identity with always being different. Because the thing that is Ray Kao Kubo is original, fearless ideas, I think. Mm. I mean, I'm not an expert on her, but I'm just saying right now, mm. I mean, look, I mean, the, I mean, putting military clothes with shorts, I mean, I know it's not as daring as the last two collections, I don't think. It's still bold. It's confident, maybe that's a better word. And also there's uh, one collection, I'm not, I don't know where I'm saying it right, Ganvu, the, uh, the streetwear line for Com, mm. that, um, cause that's massive, massively successful. And it's like the most expensive, one of the most expensive streetwear you can mm. buy. And the quality is amazing. Mm. So I guess, you know, that, 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 yeah. I guess that's how it relates back to Com, because that's one of the best selling collections. Mm. I mean, it's just totally untouchable on Com. And mm. with Com. You just can't, you know, it is just, you know that all of these, no matter how kind of ugly those shoes might be to me in particular, um, they're going to be incredibly made and probably made with the best craftspeople in the world. So there's, that, there's something that's very convincing about something that's really beautifully made. Because actually, once you look at craft, you look at fabric and you mm. look at construction, you, don't, you almost forget the colour or the, or the cut or the, because you're just kind of looking at actually the quality of what you're <coughs> I do concede into. that this will, this will be better made, but I actually do think that Nazir's pieces are pretty well made as well. <laughs> I do, like, I... I That's I, a I different think. conversation though. It's like, they have to be well made to sell, full stop. It's like someone you know, taking a photograph. No, I would come on. There's lots of new designers, and you're like, mm. this is for. And it reflect. And after a season, they get dropped from places. Mm. You yeah. know, we all know you have to do good. Quality. And also, I guess the most important question with Nasir is, I, I personally don't think he's a passing trend. Because mm. if like what like doesn't matter whether I you know I like his style or not, but I, you know just from a very objective point of view, like for me, it, I don't think it's a passing trend. Because there is this, you know, as I said, there's a support network. Mm. There's like commerce in it. So obviously, yeah. he's one of the. And if the name. thing, the thing is, that fashion has these two tensions. So there's the tension of being the knowing and intelligent elite, and that's where I say class gets confused with commerce, because there's that idea that we're all going shopping and, and spending loads of money, and you know, we're all into quality. And then there's the tension of commerce, which mm. you know, Nazir is bringing a whole mm. massive new audience into fashion. So, you know, that could pay for a lot more special things for us to do. Mm. What audience is that? I think he's bringing young people, he's, he's, bring, he's bringing mm. young people who traditionally wouldn't get Kiko, uh, fashion. Kiko was Zahara fans, I guess. The what fans? Kiko was Zahara. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, he's, he's sort of, you know, he's working closely with loads of grime artists and aligning that that world with the fashion world, you know? And I, I don't think that that's been done before, but we should go to closing comments on com, <laughs> leave, um, yeah, we should go to closing comments on the, cause I know that people will want us to <coughs> give our verdict on spring, summer 15, home bleu. Mr. Symbol, if you'd like to begin. <laughs> um, well, I just know I'm gonna buy a lot from this collection. <laughs> yeah. So I guess, you know. Favourite so. piece? Um, 
Well, I do, I think, I hope the shoes are going into production. Would you so, buy the shoes? Really? Well, I probably won't wear them, you, but you I buy guess them. you know, yeah, I'll buy yeah, them. Yeah. Um, I, th I think, it, you know, it, it doesn't look as um, challenging as, it, and I like to look at common shows and think, I really don't understand it, what is it about? And this look, just looks a bit more commercial, so I feel slightly disappointed. Mm -hmm. Not as a consumer, just as, as a person that wants to be pushed in terms of looking at fashion. Except for the shoes. Except for the shoes, yeah. A little bit underwhelmed. You know, just different fabrics and different seam placing is, is not really something that is uh, groundbreaking in my head. But then again, she's nothing really to prove. Mm. So maybe that's something else. Mm. I don't know. I'd be interested to see the, the notes on the show. You yeah. know, it's like looking at an art piece when you really don't know what's going on and you dismiss it. Well, apparently the there weren't any. Oh, really? Mm. Well, then, but there then we go. She always has that one, you know, overarching Statement. keyword. Mm. Like the last time was holy holes. Was yeah. yeah, yeah, holy jackets. That's kind that of what I was touching jackets. on earlier. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, well, that's so what I was. Yeah, so for this collection, I just really want to know what dodgy what shoes. <laughs> But that's what I mean. I think she's kind of, there's a real kind of, there's a, there is a sense of humour there because, yeah. I mean, holy holes, okay, great. So I, I imagine that it's not massively insightful getting kind of three words from, from this. And it's that, that thing, that misplaced faith in just because you've been doing this for so long and um, you've had, su had such huge influence that, of course, you're going to still be... I think her women's wear collections absolutely unquestionably are kind of incredible, massively influential, mm. their retail outlets, kind of all of the other lines that they have, but the menswear, this collection, it, there's nothing, I'm kind of, again, underwhelmed. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.